Hi there, welcome to episode two of my pelvic health mini series. Um, I hope you checked in on episode one. Um, during episode one, we talked about what the pelvic floor is, just to give you a bit of an understanding of its normal function um, and what it should be doing to support us. So moving into episode two today, we're gonna look at the bladder and the pelvic floor. So are probably our bladder symptoms are the ones that ring the most bells um, for us when we think about problems associated with the pelvic floor. So obviously the one at the forefront of our minds is probably urinary leakage. Um, and it's something that there's a strong association between urinary leakage and having babies. And the media will almost portray that to us as something that is normal um, and that's something that you should then just have to put up with having had children but that's not the case at all um, if we've got any urinary leakage um, having had our babies at all that's not normal um, and it's not something that we should have to put up with um, Problems with the bladder and the pelvic floor are not exclusively related to pregnancy and birth. As we talked about um, in the first episode, there are other risk factors um, for problems with your pelvic health. So that could be obesity, um, repetitive strain, um, age-related changes, hormonal changes, menopause. There's a whole host of other factors that can um, impact the functionality of our pelvic floor as well. So today we are going to talk about um, stress incontinence. So that's the one that, um, again, is at the forefront of your mind, that urinary leakage. Um, but that's not the only problem that we see associated with our bladder um, and the pelvic floor. So let's have a bit of a chat um, about what should normally be happening with our bladder. So I'm going to show you an image now um, of normal bladder function. What we're seeing here, number one, um, is where the bladder is beginning to fill. So you see the detrusor muscles there, they're the muscles of the bladder. So ordinarily in a normal, healthy functioning bladder, they should be relaxed at this point. Um, and then we've got the urethral sphincter, which should be contracting there to keep closed. And your pelvic floor then should also have some contraction there so that we don't have any urinary leakage. Moving on to the number two um, image there. Um, so when we the bladder will get to a um, sort of a half full point is when we would feel the first sensations to need to go for a wee. Um, but we should be able to hold very successfully this amount of urine in the bladder. So there should be um, no leakage at this point either. Um, then we get to... Um, Point three, where we've got an almost full bladder and by this point we will be feeling that we really do need to have a wee. Um, and then we move on to um, point four, um, which is micturition, which is when we go for a wee. So at this point, the detrusor muscles will contract. So the bladder muscles will then contract to encourage urine to move from the bladder into the urethra and then we can pass the urine out. So at this point we need the sphincter to relax and also the pelvic floor so that we can then empty the bladder. So you want to be able to fully empty the bladder here so that there's nothing left um, remaining in the bladder so we should be able to fully void here as well. So those detrusor muscles, we're going to talk about um, an overactive uh, bladder shortly. Um, and it's those muscles that we will be seeing um, becoming overactive in, in that situation. Okay, right then. So what can go wrong? What makes that normal function stop happening? So stress incontinence then. So stress incontinence, the word stress um, is used. So the leakage that we see um, is anything that is putting pressure through the bladder. Anything causing stress on the bladder then causes it to leak. So we see um, stress incontinence um, when we exercise. So running, jumping, trampolining, obviously there is one of the ones people, women haven't had babies are often terrified to jump on a, a trampoline um, because of urinary leakage. But weightlifting, sex, a lot of different things can cause pressure on the bladder and then that stress incontinence that we see. So um, 
We consider that it's most likely to be associated with a weak pelvic floor. And yes, that is the case in a lot of instances, but it's not exclusively related to a weak pelvic floor. So we're gonna have a look at um, an overactive tense pelvic floor um, in a little bit. Um, but those ones where we have got a weakened pelvic floor, we've just lost that normal function. So the pelvic floor should stop us from weeing until we're at the right place in time where we can then relax and then go for a wee. So we have lost that function of the pelvic floor because of weakness, so whatever has caused that. Um, sometimes we see stress incontinence though as a result of damage to the bladder sphincter. So there's a sphincter that is there to stop urine um, leaking out. But sometimes there's nerve damage and trauma to that sphincter and then that loses its function as well. So some of the stress incontinence that you could be seeing is a result of um, problems with the sphincter rather than the pelvic floor. So you might find that you've been doing your pelvic floor exercises um, for a long time. You feel that you've researched and you know that you're doing them correctly, but you're just not resolving that problem. For you then, it could be that there's something wrong with the sphincter. So that would require some further investigation. So that's stress incontinence. Then we've got an overactive bladder. So this is something entirely different. So when we've got um, an overactive bladder, we often see an increase in frequency to go for a wee and that will happen overnight as well. So if you feel that you're getting up in the night for a wee, um, that can indicate to you a potential overactive bladder. Sudden urges to wee um, and then sometimes we get leakage on the back of those sudden urges where we're not able to get to the toilet in time. So with um, an overactive bladder, um, it's involuntary contraction of the bladder that we're seeing that's what's causing these problems and these sensations. So it's not typically related to um, pelvic floor weakness, it can be partly to do with that but for the most part it's to do with the bladder itself. So again, if you're feeling that um, you've been doing your pelvic floor exercises, doing them correctly, you've sought um, external help to do your pelvic floor correctly, but you're just not getting on top of this, these symptoms that you're seeing, um, again, it might be time to speak with your GP again, let them know what you're experiencing, um, so that we can look into it a little bit more. The answer is so frequently to do your pelvic floor exercises, keep doing your pelvic floor exercises, keep squeezing, keep squeezing, keep squeezing. Particularly if we are a new mum or a fairly new mum, there's always this assumption, is stress incontinence through um, having a weak pelvic floor, but that is not always the case. So stress incontinence, overactive bladder. Then we can potentially have a pelvic floor that is too tight. Now this is something that's not really discussed that frequently because it's always pelvic floor weakness that's focused on, squeeze, 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 must strengthen up that pelvic floor, must make it tighter. But actually we can see problems when the pelvic floor is too tight. So when we talked about the normal function of the pelvic floor in episode one, we just want this hammock of muscles to have a um, strong function so that it can activate and do its job, but also so that it can relax and be um, inactivated when we don't need it to be doing its job. So the pelvic floor needs to function well. So a pelvic floor that is too tight is called a hypertonic pelvic floor. So symptoms that you might see if your pelvic floor is too tight is sudden urges to urinate, increased frequency of urination, sometimes leakage. So you're probably seeing a bit of a pattern. Those are some of the signs that we see with stress incontinence and overactive bladder. So we need to be our own scientists here, try and navigate our way through our symptoms and try and work out what might be causing us an issue. So another sign that you might see with um, a pelvic floor that is too tight is that you might be desperate for a wee, go and sit down on the loo 
and you just can't get that flow going, it just won't start. Um, it can take a little bit of concentration, a little bit of time, and sometimes that will indicate to you that you've got an overactive pelvic floor. The time when I think about it for me is I'm quite an anxious person, quite self-conscious, um, that if I go for a wee in a public loo and I know that there's somebody in the cubicle next door, sometimes I just get stage fright and it's my pelvic floor saying, nope, you are not going and you and I just can't get that flow of urine going until either somebody flushes or <laughs> know that I'm no longer sitting next to somebody in um, the cubicle next door. So that's just a really simplified um, example of the pelvic floor being too tight. So um, we might find that we can't get the flow of urine, but also sometimes we can't fully empty the bladder. And so when we go for a wee, we should fully empty, so fully void that bladder. But if we can't for some reason, um, then some urine will remain in the bladder and then that can then lead on to urine retract infection. So if you're finding that maybe you're getting cystitis or urine tract infection quite frequently, that could tell you again, if you can match it with some other symptoms, that that might be what's going on for you. So don't get fobbed off that it's just stress incontinence. If people keep saying squeeze, 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 that might not be the answer for you. You might, yes, need to learn to exercise that muscle, but also you will need to learn how to relax that muscle. So another way to think about it is if we were training our bicep muscle um, and we had been walking around with it under some tension all day, when we went to lift heavy, it probably wouldn't work as well as it should do. So when we do a bicep exercise, we need to do the exercise from a re relaxed state and then do the heavy lift. Um, another way to look at it is if you had been walking around all day on tiptoes and somebody said to you, now do some explosive jumping, chances are your calf muscles are going to be pretty fatigued, pretty exhausted, so you would struggle to jump um, as well as you might have done if you hadn't been work walking on tiptoes all day. So if your pelvic floor is under activation all the time and is not able to relax, it can become too tense. Causes of a hypertonic pelvic floor can be stress and anxiety. If you are, like me, uh, quite an anxious, self-conscious person, you can find that you hold tension in your pelvic floor, so you tend to hold there a little bit all the time. And that can be similar with your core muscles as well. So if you find that you're always holding your abs really, really tightly, that's all linked with the pelvic floor. So that can cause um, a tense, over-tense pelvic floor. Also, just somebody who exercises their abs very, very frequently, again, that can cause problems. Um, if you've got some sort of pelvic pain, um, that can cause you to be tense there, you're almost guarding because you're um, in discomfort. So people with endometriosis, quite severe um, inflammatory bowel or irritable bowel, um, all of those things can cause discomfort, which can then make us tense the pelvic floor birth trauma, any scar tissue there, again, can just cause us to overactivate the pelvic floor. So if you continue with the series, you might see that there's some other symptoms highlighted um, when we look at the bowel, when we look at sex life, that might, again, show you that this might be you. You might have an overactive pelvic floor rather than a weak one. Sometimes there's a bit of a combination of the two. It's so complex, it's such a minefield. This is why we need to be really tuned in with this area of our body and be the scientist of our own body. Um, one final thing is sometimes an overactive bladder can cause a hypertonic pelvic floor. So if we've got a bladder where we need to wee very frequently, so we're having to hold on to get to the loo, again, that's gonna be something that's gonna cause you to um, hold on to your pelvic floor more frequently. So stress incontinence, overactive bladder, hypertonic pelvic floor, a pelvic floor that's too tight. One more thing to talk about is prolapse, bladder prolapse. So we can have prolapse of um, any of the pelvic 
um, organs, so the uh, bladder, the uterus, the bowel. Sometimes we see a combination of prolapse, so we see a little bit of a couple of the things. So with a bladder prolapse, it's called a sister seal, okay? So um, what will happen is the bladder will um, collapse into the vagina, okay? So risk factors are similar that we've talked about already. So birth, um, a family history of prolapse, um, constipation, so putting pressure through their obesity, heavy lifting, menopause, hysterectomy, they can all be risk factors for a bladder prolapse. So I'm again gonna show you another image here. Um, so have a quick look and I will run through what the image is showing. Okay, so what we're looking at here is types of pelvic organ prolapse. You can see an image there of the normal anatomy. So we talked about that in episode one, the pelvic floor's normal function in a healthy body, um, supporting those organs to stay where they're supposed to stay um, and to behave how they're supposed to behave. But that's not always how things go. Um, so you can see some other images there. So I want to focus in today on the sister seal image. So that's the bladder prolapse. We will look at some of the other images later on in the series. So with a um, bladder prolapse, the bladder will collapse down and almost start taking up the space of the vagina. Um, so the symptoms that you might experience with that is a bulge in the vagina. Sometimes it is severe enough that it can be visualised externally. So we see different severities of bladder prolapse. Sometimes it is very severe, that point where you can see it externally. Um, but for a lot, it, it's not quite that severe. So you might find that there's a heaviness there or sort of a dragging type sensation. Um, you might find there's some difficulty urinating, def difficulty getting that flow of urine. There might be some discomfort during sex, uh, frequent urinary tract infection, um, inability to fully void, and the two of those things are connected. There might be some pelvic discomfort, um, back pain. There might be some bleeding there as well. So please, please, if you are experiencing any of these symptoms at all, please speak with your GP. Um, it can be sorted and resolved. Um, it just could need um, a combination of treatments. So there might be a surgery required. Um, sometimes they use a pessary that's inserted. Sometimes they use estrogen and there can be training of the pelvic floor as well. Okay, um, so that's the main issues that I wanted to raise. Um, I'm hoping that I've made it clear or if anything, I'm hoping that I've highlighted to you how complex these issues can be. Um, it can be so much more than just a stress incontinence leakage because your pelvic floor is weak. Um, if you have been struggling with your symptoms and not getting on top of them, um, then there could be more to it. Um, so I'd really encourage you to watch the remainder of the series because as I said just now, um, that might highlight to you, yes, I've got that symptom. Yes, I've got that symptom. And then you can put this all together. And then when you go to speak to your GP, if that's what you're wanting to do, you can give them a little bit more to work with than just I've got some urinary incontinence. Okay, so um, that is episode two. I um, hope it was helpful. Episode three is going to go on to look at symptoms that we see related to the bowel. Okay, um, thank you very much for tuning in. Please subscribe to my channel um, and then you'll get the alerts as to when each episode uh, pops up.